everyone, welcome back to my home studio. So this is day 34 of my coronavirus distraction videos that I've been working on for my students and for all of you as a distraction of what's going on. So today is a follow-up on the most recent video that I posted yesterday, which is the video where I threw uh, four different items. I threw a plate, a cup, a bowl, and a vase. And today I'm gonna show you the trimming process for all of these. So let's get started. The cup was the very first form that I threw the other day and it has nice thin walls. The whole idea when you're trimming a form is that you want the inside and the outside of the walls to always really be parallel. So they should be reflecting uh, the contour of the inside and the outside should be reflecting one another. Now, when you look at the interior of the uh, where the wall and the bottom meet on whether it be a bowl, a cup, or something else, where that internal corner is, where it goes, it transitions from flat bottom to side, that's the place at which you would want to place your foot. Um, the reason that you place your foot underneath that angle change is because that is going to be the uh, spot where you want it to, to remain parallel uh, so it doesn't go out and get thicker there or too thin or have a weird angle. I have another video that um, I have posted before about uh, the correct placement of uh, feet. And I have uh, some cross sections of bowls, which are really handy to show. Unfortunately, I am like 90% sure that all of my cross sections I left at school. So I don't have those here to illustrate for you. But hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to start off. I marked with my fingers, okay, I marked like with my fingernail wh where the angle chain change was happening. So by indicating on the uh, outside where that angle change occurred, that enables me to know where to put the outside of my foot. Now, my tip for my students is when you are trimming, you always want to connect your hands. And I highly recommend if you can connect the tool, so it's being held not only by your left hand, but you're holding the handle of it by your right hand. So I'm holding the tool in two places, okay? So I, I go straight down from the bottom for the outside of the foot. Not I do not come in from the outside, I go straight down from the bottom. The reason for cutting straight down from the bottom is because that way when I do the, the parallel cut on the inside, the foot will be even, it's not gonna be off. Um, I wished I would have known that from the beginning when I started trimming feet, I had to kind of figure that one out the hard way. So straight down from the bottom is for the, for the cut. So here's the exterior cut. And now I'm gonna trim away a little bit of this down here at the base and improve the contour. When you're trimming, your pieces should really be in the leather hard state. You don't want it to be uh, bone dry because if it gets bone dry, you're going to generate a ton of dust. My goal is to always keep down dust. So I never want to trim when it's dry. If you make a mistake and allow something to get completely bone dry with my students, I usually just say, you know, it's easier if you just restart. But if you are, say for instance, you're in your home studio or you have a group studio or something and you don't have enough time where you can go in there and rethrow it, then my suggestion to you is that you keep a damp box. I have another video on uh, how to make, how I did uh, damp boxes, but a damp box is more or less a plastic bin that you put plaster in and when you keep the plaster moist in it, you can put pieces in there and keep them damp indefinitely. Or if you have to get more moisture in something, you can also put something that is drier in there 
and let it sit for several days and it will get wetter. Now, after I have done trimming with the tool, I do like to do a little bit of compression. I think compression is key on compressing down if you happen to have grog. Uh, this clay that I'm using doesn't have grog, it's grogless. But I wanted to get it really super smooth. There we go. Now, everything so far has been done over here on the right hand side of the wheel. So like maybe at four o'clock or so. I'm holding the tool with my right hand. I'm cutting around four o'clock and uh, that enables me to be really steady. Again, my elbows are down just like when I throw. So I've trimmed the outside of the foot. Now I'm ready to trim the inside of the foot. When I trim the inside, again, find a hand position where it's comfortable to hold the tool. And I'm gonna go straight down. If you happen to pick your piece up off the wheel and you stick it back down, uh, you have to be very aware that if you pick it up, you don't want to rotate it when you put it back down because if you rotate it the slightest little bit, you can get it off and it will no longer be uh, in the same centered configuration. All right, so there's the inside. A lot of times I like to take my tool and kind of around the bottom of the edge so it's not real sharp and flat. Maybe add just a tad bit of moisture and then compress it with your fingers. I did not mention it, but the device that I'm using here, this is called a Giffen Grip. The Giffen Grip is a tool that is designed to hold your piece upside down in place as you're trimming. There are many different ways that you can trim besides a Giffen Grip, but as I am a uh, potter, when I like to do production pots, maybe if I'm gonna do like 25 bowls in a day, I find that using a Giffen Grip makes it a little faster and easier for me. So there is the outside trimmed foot of this cup. It took off extra weight and this is ready to get a handle. Okay, next one. Let's talk about the bowl. So the bowl is a little bit easier than the cup, okay, because it's totally rounded. If you remember on the interior, the inside does not have a flat bottom at all. The inside has a round interior. So my goal is to reflect what's happening on the inside, on the outside as well. So I'm kind of indicating with my nails right about here, so probably about a quarter of an inch in, where I feel like the, the transition might be happening. I'm gonna go just a little bit further in, where the transition from bottom to side occurs. Now, again, it's rounded on this one, it's not, a clear delineation, but it's where that transition feels like it's happening, going from, from the bottom and transitioning into the side. Okay. Oh, and by the way, when you use a Giffen Grip, you always have to check to make sure that you've placed it on level. If, uh, if you have it stuck on a bat pin, it will prevent you from being centered. All right, so my hands are locked, my elbows are locked. And uh, all of these trimmings that are leather hard here, quite often, I will just set them in a pile and then at the end of my trimming session, I'll take all of these trimmings and I'll put them in a bag and spritz them down with a fair amount of water, let them sit for, you know, 24, 48 hours and they'll be nice plastic clay again. Now, again, 
I'm using a kick wheel. So if you notice that my wheel is slowing down as I'm working, it's just because I'm not kicking it. And I'm not using my motor as much because for whatever reason, my motor is extremely loud. I'm uh, thinking that I would like to go to uh, an electric wheel sometime soon. So when I make videos, it's not nearly as distracting. When you are designing your forms, you always want to design the form of your foot as well. Don't ignore the form of the foot because that is, it's a, it's a really important desi design decision. You want to think about the foot being uh, an extension of the form, having it really help enhance the, the look of the form. Now, in the case of mine, I'm making it wide enough that the bowl should not be tippy because I'm actually going to be making this into a, a yarn bowl later. So I don't want the foot to be narrow because I want it to be very functional and stable. But the other consideration that I have is when I glaze it, a lot of times I like to hold my pieces by the foot on the bottom. And if it has just a slight bit of an undercut, it enables me to grip it. So it's certainly not something that one has to do. It is purely a choice that I like to make thinking about my glaze that I'll be eventually doing. So hands locked together as I go straight down for the inside of the foot. I know a lot of people do not like to, to actually trim feet. Some people prefer flat bottoms and they just trim on the outside. It is purely a personal preference. Whatever you like, there's not a right or wrong. I personally, I like to trim feet. I enjoy the process of trimming feet. Therefore, I do it. Okay. There's my trimmed bowl. And again, the profile, the wall should be the same thickness all the way from the bottom and up the sides. It should not be getting thicker at the base of the wall. It should be uniform. Now, the vase itself, I don't normally trim a vase, but I do have a little bit of a funny line here. So if you do trim a vase, Okay, if I wanted to say trim a vase with the, uh, with the Giffen Grip, I could do it if I remove the sliders and turn them around. You can see that one side has a little hole. Okay. Then I could use the extender arms with hands. This is incredibly unusual for me to do it, but I thought I might as well. Normally, I would just take a rib and tidy it up, but I did leave quite the indent for whatever reason when I, when I threw that yesterday. Okay. And there we go. It's done. And lastly is going to be my plate. Now, when doing a plate with the Giffen Grip, I am definitely going to turn the slider in to the side with the rubber. If you make a really large plate, like sometimes, this is just a, a small plate. 
So if, he, if I made a plate that extended out farther beyond this, Giffen Grip has uh, wide sliders, so you can uh, go all the way out to the edge of the, the white base. Now, when doing a plate, the biggest mistake that the kids make is they go too narrow with the foot. Remember that you want the foot ring to be underneath the angle change that happens on the interior. And this is a plate, it's wide on the bottom, so that angle change is going to be way out, very close to the point at which I threw it. So I'm not taking off all that much here on the outside, probably no more than a quarter of an inch, but now I am going to indicate a foot because I really do like to have a bit of a foot on a plate to help ease the uh, glazing, the angle of the glaze. Now, the one difference that I make when I do a plate is I have the foot be fatter, wider than on say a bowl or a cup. So you can see I've probably kept the foot about a little bit over half an inch. Now I'm just going to round the transition so it doesn't have any sharp corners but the bottom of the foot is rounded. And then the interior of this you can either go from the inside toward the outside or outside toward the inside. It doesn't matter. Whatever you find the easiest. I'm using the corner of the flat end. This is a Kemper double, the, uh, it, like a double trim tool. Or you could do the round end. Now I just switched to the round end to show you that. So whatever whatever end of the tool feels most comfortable. Now, these Kemper tools do begin to dull after a while, especially with the grogged clay that we use at school. If your tool is uh, dull, I do have um, some sharpening tools where we can put a nice sharp edge back on it again. If your clay is a little bit on the dry side, especially, make sure that you have a nice sharp tool and just like we did a spiral on the inside, if you desire to, you could put a spiral on the outside with your tool. So I put a, just a little bit of a spiral in there. And then lastly, a little bit of water on the foot. And I'll compress that. I could use finger, I could use a rib. And then I'm going to go just a little bit more. I can, I can feel that and it feels like it might be still just a little bit thick there. I need to make sure that I'm not setting it in any debris on the edge. All right. I'm going to just go a little bit deeper there on the outside. Okay, there we go. You can see I've got uh, probably almost a quarter of an inch in depth on the foot that's been trimmed away. So this I will be able to glaze on the inside. Here is a slightly uh, closer, better look. You can see the depth of the, the uh, foot rings that I put on here. It's deep enough that it will enable me to uh, glaze in the middle. 
uh, of each of these. And then this one, I really just tidied it up. Now the big thing to remember about a vase is you don't want the vase walls to get thick down near the bottom. So this is still pretty lightweight. It's pretty thin. I didn't have to trim off all that much. So hopefully you found that helpful, informative. Remember, cut down from the outside. And then when you cut down from the inside of the foot, your the foot ring should be even. And I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can.